Hello, my name is Nick Carroll, and this is part five of the AMD Kaveri PC build. Let's get started. I'm going to try something a little different this time. I'm going to try to keep <laughs> things a little bit more concise than usual. There's going to be a bit more jump cuts uh, in this video than others because I want to sort of go point by point here and not ramble as much. So uh, before I start, I want to give a brief tour of the new desk, the new, well, new to me desk, and the new location for the PC. And if anyone's watched any of my previous videos, they'll know that um, my orientation in this room is a little bit different. So here's a quick uh, tour of my desk and desktop PC, and uh, then we'll continue. So here's a brief tour of my desk here. You can see I've got lamps on each side here and out there. This is for podcasting. The lamps are actually pushed back towards the wall normally, but in order to better highlight, to better shine light on the desk, I'm moving forward a tiny bit. Anyway, as you can tell, it's an inexpensive desk I picked up from Walmart many years ago. My wife used it for a long time and then she migrated to the living room. So anyways, this is my my desk now. I'm using this to replace my old one. Anyways, I'll just give you a little bit of a tour here. As you can tell, the wood is uh, kind of showing through. It's been through hell, basically. Uh, traditional keyboard and mouse that I use for for podcasting the very silent keys on the keyboard and of course a typical mouse mouse pad there's the uh, monitor I have the speakers I use I have a, a couple subwoofers under here that I use uh, for bass need a tiny bit of cable management here here's of course my microphone here's a USB cable that I use to connect my smartphone whenever I come home to upload data from it directly to my computer. Here is, uh, start here, here are some tools that I use typically for anything related to PCs. Here's my trusty uh, Nexus 7 tablet. My, there's my alarm clock right here. Use that to wake up every morning. A little Chromebook here. Here's my Netgear Nighthawk 1900 uh, Wi-Fi wi router, a lamp, and of course another toolkit that I use for any sort of PC repair. There's some batteries there. This is a USB uh, uh, hub that I have. You probably may not be able to see it here, but there's a couple Logitech um, Bluetooth receivers that are used for a keyboard and mouse that I use whenever I'm in bed to kind of show what's on screen. And then of course, here is my old, uh, here's my uh, computer nestled away in here. You'll notice there are no lights in the front. I have the LEDs unplugged and uh, the uh, fan that did come with this case has a red LED that I've, I've got this unplugged for now because I don't need it up at the moment. So there you go. Just wanted to give you guys a, a brief tour of the desk. This is where the computer sits now. This is where I do all my podcasting. As you can see, my desktop PC is in a different location. Normally it's just to the right of my desk on the on the entertainment center slash uh, dresser and it's usually just a few feet away from my ears in this case it's now under the desk in a enclosure which actually muddles the sound quite a bit there's only a slight bit of audible noise of the uh, fans whirring and it's only noticeable once the uh, everyone's gone to bed and it's completely uh, quiet in the house. Then you can hear just a little bit of white noise essentially created by the fans. Otherwise, no complaints. So it's been a month since I uh, built the system completely and uh, the, the unit has been running uh, extremely well in, uh, since then. I had a few uh, audio and visual glitches early on uh, which were pretty much cleared after a reboot. I'll get into a little bit more detail there. But uh, it's been running great. been running like a champ. I've been playing a little bit of Battlefield 4 and Titanfall on it and uh, I haven't done any sort of overclocking or anything on it. I'm just keeping it at stock levels because I want to keep this just run, running reliably uh, for the time being. One aspect of the build that I'm, I'm sure some experienced PC builders may have realized was the, difficult, the difficulty I had with the case fans and the three pin connectors. And there was only one three pin connector on the motherboard and there were two other four pin connectors that are typically used for PWM uh, connectors. For uh, case fans, I had uh, I didn't realize at the time, but um, they are compatible. I could have plugged in a three-pin fan to those four-pin connectors, and that would have worked just fine. And on the other end, I could have had a four-pin connector on a case fan and plugged it into a three-pin 
uh, connector on the motherboard and that would work just fine but it didn't occur to me for a couple weeks afterwards that there was that compatibility I did some research and uh, and saw that, that that isn't an issue just the fans that have four pins would just run at full speed just like a regular case fan would be would if it was connected to, thir to all three uh, of those connectors anyways not a big deal but I wanted to point that out for in anyone that was looking at the video and yelling at the screen hey Nick you could have done this or hey those fans would have worked just fine oh well also I mentioned in the last video that uh, I replaced uh, the hard drive that came with the build with a uh, SSD a Samsung 840 Pro uh, solid-state drive as my primary boot drive I kept the one terabyte drive that came with the build and added a few older ones uh, from my PC into this so it's actually a little bit more of an upgraded uh, system than it was before also I have a planned video card upgrade uh, in the works I have a AMD R7 270x 4 gig video card on the way it should be here Thursday or Friday and I'll use that to put in this system to have enhanced graphics it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do as far as a video card. Initially, I was going to grab a little R7 250X and use that with this Kavari or Kaveri uh, PC using dual graphics. But after doing considerable amounts of research, watching a number of videos, reading some articles online, etc., I basically uh, found out that the dual graphics does give you a slight bit of a performance increase, t typically 10 to 20% with video games upwards of 50% or more uh, within some benchmarks but uh, for the most part the dual graphics wouldn't be used for for almost anything so and it wouldn't provide as much of an upgrade as I'd like I'd spend 120 bucks or more on a uh, compatible card and even then I wanted to buy uh, a 250X that has 2 gigs of RAM instead of 1 gig of RAM and it would come with DDR5 graphics as opposed to DDR3 which is what the system uses and wouldn't I don't think operate as well in terms of dual graphics between the two and so there were just too many questions I had and too much too little a performance increase for me to justify spending 120 bucks or or more on a video card that uh, would would not offer a significant performance increase than the uh, stock graphics so then I was looking into discrete video card solutions that would not use dual graphics and at that point it was like the you know the 260x potentially a 265x if those ever came out and it got down to the point I was looking at a 270 or 270x and then I wanted to make sure I had enough of frame buffer uh, for Titanfall which at the ultra settings requires uh, three uh, gigabytes of RAM so that's the justification for getting a, a four gig video card so that's upcoming and I'll end up having a an unboxing video for that video card and and uh, later uh, an update regarding the performance for that. I want to circle back a little bit regarding that power supply and case mismatch. Uh, you know that really irritated me in that video you know the fact that I'm putting all this time and effort into assembling this build and there's an incompatibility between the case and power supply that I believe should not have been there. The power supply itself is a small form factor power supply. It's denoted by the SFX acronym in the actual name of it and there's a certain uh, standard that's used for the size of the PSU as well as the length of the cables to some extent and uh, basically for it to be SFX power supply has to be small enough to fit in builds you know that use it and even though there's compatibility with your typical desktop tower in terms of you know there's a bracket that, that the power supply would use and to fit in the case the problem is many of these cases these mid towers and full-size towers have bottom mount PSU designs where the power supply goes in the bottom and that's simply not enough length between the case and the cable to reach that motherboard connector and that's something that I had an issue with well coincidentally today Newegg published a video Newegg TV published a video on this exact power supply the one that was used in this build and I actually commented on the YouTube channel to denote that this is not compatible with some bills and I even spelled out the, uh, that small form factor design and the specifications for it and the reason why it won't fit in a similar case as mine so I'm hoping that'll help direct some people to avoid that power supply in that
particular instance. I still believe it's a good power supply. It is an 80 plus uh, bronze PSU that, that operates at 300 watts and, it should, and it's made by a reputable company, Silverstone, and uh, it should find its place in many PC builds in the future, in my personal opinion, but it should be relegated to top mount uh, power supply designs on mid tower or full tower cases or bottom mount or top mount on either micro ATX or mini ATX or ITX uh, cases. I think at that point that should not be an issue. In my opinion, I would recommend any uh, different combination of case and power supply. I think the case is good, I think the power supply is good, but they don't uh, play well together. If you're going to order this case identically or something similar, don't order this power supply. And vice versa. If you're going to order this power supply, realistically you're using it for an ITX or maybe a micro ATX um, Kavari system or a mid tower or full size tower where the power supply uh, location is actually at the top of the build. Another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to break down the reasoning behind why I went for a Kavari APU as opposed to just a standard CPU and a discrete video card. The whole reason I decided to go for that was A, I was indecisive about which video card that I wanted. I hadn't done gaming in several years, well a few years, in any sort of legitimate hardcore gaming and so I was not certain what kind of video card I wanted. I wanted at least the amount of current video capability that I had with my old Fermi based NVIDIA GT430 uh, video card that I've been using for two or three years uh, previously on my old PC which is the Core 2 Duo by Intel and that worked just fine for all the multimedia viewing websites etc that I was doing there and I wanted something at least as good and so an APU would provide that. I could have bought say a quad core like here's a FX 4350 for 140 dollars with the same uh, quad core performance that I get from this APU in this dedicated quad core and I would have saved about uh, 40, 40, 40 to 45 bucks you know for that but there's no onboard graphics and I would have had to purchase either a, a uh, motherboard that had integrated graphics on it or I'd also have to make the decision on a discrete video card at the time and I figured uh, that extra forty dollars is worth it if I'm gonna go ahead and purchase a CPU with at the minimum good graphics certainly better than my old uh, graphics but I now have the existing chance of upgrading to a discrete video card later on down the line so those are the reasons I chose that I could have also picked up an FX 6350 for $40 dollars um, that would have offered a tiny bit more performance in terms of using all six cores the thing is the APU the two uh, uh, CPUs that I mentioned and the FX 8350 the two, uh, $200 option which is a octa-core or eight core design all have nearly identical single core performance so unless you're doing something that uses all eight cores your general performance is going to be the same if you're using certain applications that are only using one or two cores you won't notice the difference only when you're using games or applications that really demand or can utilize more than four cores that's when that difference is there and I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend the extra money on one of those cards when I wasn't even planning on getting a discrete video card that was that good so I would have spent actually a little bit more for day-to-day -day similar performance in terms of uh, CPU general processing and I was still up in the air on video processing so this is a bit rambly but I just wanted to point out that that I did have a method to, uh, to my madness as far as determining the APU and I was highly satisfied with it because that allowed me to spend more time or really a month in or more really because I made the decision to buy this bill uh, nearly two months ago anyway so uh, it all worked out I, I'm pretty happy I've got the video card that I want on order and it should be here in the next couple days so now let me talk about my benchmarking experience I would tried a number of older Future Mark and 3D Mark benchmarks uh, in the past from 2006, you know, from 2005, 2006, uh, 2007 or 8, and then 2010, 2011, and then the most recent uh, Future Mark uh, uh, benchmarks. And the older benchmarks didn't really utilize uh, multiple cores well. And so my old system was actually giving me identical performance to this brand new system uh, with the APU. Uh, on the older benchmarks plus some of the older games that I use were only using one core like the original Unreal Tournament for example was only used one core when I was playing 
and so I was actually getting better graphics uh, in Direct 3D on the uh, on the old system. But as I started using newer games, uh, the newer Kaveri build was actually outperforming my old system. So, for example, I would get like at ultra settings nine frames per second in Battlefield 4 on my old system, why? Or I'd get like 11 frames per second on my old system, 10 to 11, and then on the new system I get 19 or 20. This system here, so that was pretty good at ultra. And then when I'd set it down to the lowest settings. I would get maybe 20 frames per second on the old system and 30 plus frames per second on this one using the Kaveri uh, build. And then I would try Titanfall and it would be something similar. I'd get about a 33 to 50% boost in frames per second at the lowest settings in Titanfall compared from my older system to the new system. This was without, without a discrete video card. So I've been very happy with the performance of this build just as a baseline uh, when I'm rendering a video like this video here is several clips that are going to be put together in Windows Movie Maker and I'm going to basically uh, import all these into Windows Movie Maker that takes an, a certain amount of time and then when I am creating the, the video from that collection when that's being rendered that takes about half as much time or it's completed twice as fast on this new system because of the dual core performance of the old system doesn't match the quad core performance of this new system and actually during the benchmarks that I ran like I would do uh, a few browser based uh, benchmarks um, from on the old system and the new system and since they're all using essentially one core the performances were identical but that's only two cores that I have on the old system and four cores on this one so this has been a significant increase for me all the way around compared to my old system ultimately I have no more no complaints about it this system actually has USB 3 all over the place. It's got two USB in the front, two USB, USB 3 in the back. And so that allows me to do uh, much faster transfers on the USB 3 drives um, uh, that I use. So uh, anyways, that's basically it. I wanted to kind of throw all this together in this last little video. I um, uh, can't uh, state enough how happy I am with this build. So for anyone else that's considering a $500 to $600 AMD Kaveri PC build, I highly recommend it. It's certainly a great baseline that you can use. Uh, and then later on when you decide to get a video card, or even if you do choose to get a video card with the build, it's a good baseline in case the video card goes out. I've had experiences in the past where a handful of video card uh, cards over the last, I don't know, dozen or more years have gone out over time, either from overuse or maybe just a, a fan bearing you know the fan bearings went out or something like that so uh, it's nice being able to have something to fall back on if the video card goes out and uh, these uh, onboard graphics are nothing like what you get on like a core i3 or core i5 those are really low level integrated graphics these are really impressive integrated graphics so that's so that's going to wrap it up for me thank you very much for watching this pc build series and have a great day